So a couple of years ago, I met a guy who was a bodybuilder, kind of semi-professional bodybuilder, and had his own gym and that. And he was rather substantial. He was um, quite the sizable chap indeed, uh, built kind of like that. So it's kind of like me with my chasuble on, just it's a, it was full. <laughs> so uh, enormous chap. And uh, he weighed 22 stone and like I think five grams of it were fat. <laughs> it's just, mm, just all, all up here. Uh, and it was very interesting. It's always interesting talking to people who have uh, like serious dedication to anything. It's really interesting to speak to them and find out what makes them tick, what motivates them. Because you don't get that big sitting down watching Netflix. You don't. Like, that, that, takes, that takes actually daily effort. Daily effort. I mean, you have to keep them cal calories piling in. Uh, I mean, I hope you like tuna because you're going to be eating three, four cans a day. And yeah, as I, uh, yeah. Uh, he said, like, well, get, talking to him was just very interesting because he said, well, if you want to get big, you have to eat like six times a day. You know, if you, you keep eating food, like you, you, you don't get, you, know, you can't maintain 22 stone. Well, you can't, I was going to say, you can't maintain 22 stone, do nothing. You could if you're an absolute couch potato doing nothing, nothing but eating, but you can't maintain 22 stone of muscle doing nothing. So you have to eat, you have to eat kind of, kind of constantly and high protein foods constantly, constantly, constantly. But he said it's very interesting because um, he said at the height of my career, uh, he said I was 22 stone. And he said, I remember walking down the street thinking, everyone is looking at me. They must think I'm really skinny. Dead serious. Just absolutely convinced. I just, I just need to put on a few more kilos. I just need just maybe one more stone. If I could just get, you know, if I could just get just that bit bigger, if I could just get a, just a little more, just a little more. Because everyone must think I'm just like embarrassingly skinny. Dead, like, as I say, dead serious. It's kind of the, kind of the opposite to uh, anorexia. You know, it's, it's, it's a kind of a form of an eating disorder, if you, if you will, or at least a, a misperception of oneself, you know? But it's just very interesting, as I say, like, like, we, just go, like we mentioned yesterday as well, like looking at people, we just see the tip of the iceberg. So we, say, we see what they kind of, what they choose to show us, but we don't see the family the addictions, the hurts, the wounds, the past, the bullying, the insecurities. We don't see everything under the surface. You look at this guy and you say, Jeopardy, he's massive. You know, and wouldn't I like to be that? Wouldn't, wouldn't, we, wouldn't we all, wouldn't you all like to be that big, wouldn't you? Um, you know, wouldn't, or for some guys anyway, you know, you look at Jania, I wouldn't mind being a bit bulkier or whatever it is. Uh, but you've no idea that deep down he actually thinks he's insufficient that he's kind of short of the mark. And that he has this whole kind of hidden world within him that you would never see. And it's interesting when we look at the, the, the gospel of the transfiguration, right? Jesus has this, this whole inner world in him too that you don't see on the outside. Like the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. I'm not sure if anybody saw anything special. I mean, I'm sure they would have seen that they're, they're pleasant. They're, they always pay their bills. I'm sure Joseph would always have paid for the wood that he got, you know, to, to, to build his furniture. And I'm sure Our Lady would have always paid for the fish that they ate. You know, I mean, and, and she would have been very courteous and generous and so on and so forth. But would they have stood out as astronomically, absolutely, incredibly unique? <laughs> like Our Lady never sinned. <laughs> you know, the Immaculate Conception filled with the Holy Spirit. St. Joseph, a righteous man, a good man, a saint. Jesus, God incarnate. D did, did people see this? I don't think so. Sure, who, who, is, who is this Jesus guy? He's, surely the, he's the carpenter's son, isn't he? That's what they said of him. He's just the carpenter's son. Mary didn't even get a mention. So it's just very interesting to, when you look at, 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 at this gospel, what it's doing is it's, it's revealing something in Jesus that, that was always there, but not visible. Jesus was always God. Right? Jesus was like, from the moment of, of his conception, he was God. But even before that, he always existed as the second person of the Holy Trinity. So th there's a certain point in history where Jesus gets a human nature, yes, but Jesus always existed. Always. That's 
we believe in the Trinity. So the Trinity, the Father, and Holy Spirit, the, all three of them are God. They always were God, and all three of them always were. Right? There was a wee heresy there for a couple of centuries uh, in the church called Arianism, where they thought, well, there was a time when Jesus wasn't, uh, and then God created him at some point in history. And that's a bit of a problem. It's called a heresy. Uh, so we'll avoid that one. But so, so, so Jesus, Jesus always was. Jesus always was. But at a certain point in history, he gets a human nature. Now, how does that even work? How does that? I have really no idea how you could be God in a human nature. You will forgive me if I've used this story a couple of times, but uh, it, it, it's, the first time I heard it was from Fulton Sheen, and I think it's just a very helpful example for us to understand how, how this works, you know? Uh, he used the example of a, a dog lover. You know, imagine any of you, any of you, any dog lovers out there? Any cat lovers out there? If there are any cat lovers, you're, you're wrong, okay? <laughs> okay, dogs are nothing, okay? So, so uh, you, you know, imagine like, you know, looking at your dog and your dog is, is, is they're great company. They're a great company, aren't they great company? They're a great company and they get to know your habits and they even get to know your moods, you know? Where if you, sometimes if you're just feeling a bit down in the dumps, you know, your dog might come over and just give you a little nose into the, into the elbow. You know, and it's just, it's amazing. Like the dogs are, are, are wonderful, very intuitive and smart creatures, unlike cats who are very selfish. But, um, <laughs> um, so you can imagine, you can imagine, and you've, you've seen my dog outside as well, Scoob, very, very great dog, fantastic. But you can imagine trying to explain to your dog certain things that might make his life better, right? So you can imagine saying to your dog, and we'll take Scooby as an example. Scoob, so uh, Scoob, you can't be going up to the neighbors, right, eating the neighbor's rubbish, right? If you rip open, they're, they're rubbish bags. Um, the neighbors, they have what's known as a shotgun. And, and that, that, that will all end very, very briefly for you if you go up there. So I would really strongly recommend you don't do that. And what's he going to do? He's going to look at me and go. <laughs> <laughs> or see, see, Scoop, see, you can't, you can't play across the road there with the sheep because yet again, our neighbor on that side too has what's known as a shotgun. And, and that, that, that little frolic uh, in, in with the sheep there is going to all end very tragically. So would you mind not, and he'll look at me and he'll go, <laughs> I said, okay, Scoop, on the road there, if you wouldn't mind not playing on the road, because it's just like it's a busy road, there are trucks and there's a bend and they can't see you and they're going to mow you over, okay? So would you mind not doing that? And he'll look at me and go, <laughs> so, what is the issue here? Have I not expressed myself clearly? I think I've been very eloquent. I mean, I, th I, think, I've, I, think, I've expressed it, I think I've expressed it in very un unequivocal terms. You will die, all right? But he will look at me, and the problem isn't that I haven't expressed it clearly. The problem is he doesn't understand a word I'm saying. It's not his language, okay? So what if, what if, by some miracle, I was able to become a dog, right? Now, if I was able to become a dog, then I'd be able to obviously speak dog, <laughs> right? And so I'd be able to express myself in his terms. So imagine then, you know, I, I become a dog, and there I am as a boxer, <laughs> boxer, right? Uh, and, and, um, and, I'd be, and, and I'd speak to Scoob, and I'd say, Scoob, yeah, we better, we better not go up there to that rubbish there, because uh, you see that black stick your man is holding? Yeah, that's a death stick. Right, so we won't go there. And he go, okay, yeah, it's a good idea, good idea. Okay, we'll just eat the food around here. Exactly, exactly. We have plenty of food here. We don't need the rubbish there. And then you see the, the sheep across the field. Yeah, I see the field. I love chasing. I love chasing the sheep. Yeah. So what we'll do is we won't chase the sheep because that other guy with the beard, uh, he has another death stick. Oh, death stick is definitely bad. Exactly. Death stick is bad. So we'll keep away from beardy man with death stick. Okay. Right. So, and the road there, them big things, oh, I love chasing them. Yeah, they're called trucks. Um, they'll, they won't stop. They'll actually kill us. Oh, that'll be bad. That would be bad, Scoob. So what we'll do is we'll play around here with a football. That's nice and safe. How about that? He goes, oh, they're good idea. Good idea. <laughs> okay. So, so all the neighboring dogs then, all the neighboring dogs become familiar with my doctrine, right? With this doctrine of not eating the neighbor's rubbish and not chasing the sheep and not playing out in the road. And maybe some of the neighboring dogs, there is a neighboring dog up the hill, his name is Butch, actually. No joke, right? <laughs> Big chunky doggy. Um, so maybe Butch up the, up the road there would start thinking, sorry, who is this new boxer on the street? Who does he think he is with all of his new fandangled ideas? <laughs> right? We've always eaten out of the rubbish, we've always played on the road, and we've always chased the sheep. 
you know what we'll do with his, all of his modern ideas, modern, as they say in, English, in, 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 in Limerick, modern, all these modern ideas. You know, do you know what we'll do? Do you know what we'll do? We'll kill him. That's what we'll do. We'll put an end to him and all of his fandangled ideas. And so they plot and they, 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 and they plan. But I'm a dog, right? But with a human's intelligence. Without a human's intelligence, I can't help them because I'd just be another dog. I would do what they do. But I'm a dog. Yes, so I have to eat dog food. Yes, I have to eat, live in a dog house. Yes, I have to scratch myself uh, for cleanliness or whatever it is. Um, but I have a human's intelligence, so I'm able, that's what makes me able to, to guide them. But also with the human's intelligence, I can see them plotting. I can see their kind of prowling around. I can, I can see their plan. And maybe I think, what if? What if letting them actually kill me would show them that I actually love them? And that my, my, my teaching wasn't just, wasn't just, I feel better than you, I'm going to tell you what to do, but that my teaching is motivated by love. That's the incarnation, in a way. God becoming man, which, by the way, is a, a greater step in humility than me becoming a dog. Me and so human nature and canine nature are closer than human nature and divine nature. All right? Divine nature and human nature are eons apart. I'm closer to a dog than I am to God, in a way. But God steps down from his throne. Jesus steps down from his throne, puts his crown to one side, so to speak and takes on a human nature in which he has to sweat and work and feel hunger and feel pain and ultimately suffer and die because he loves us. To show that his doctrine isn't just teaching from on high where it's all nice and comfortable up in heaven and I'll speak through the prophets and then afterwards I'll go back and be fed some grapes by some fat cherubs. But no, I will actually step down from my throne and actually walk with you talk with you, act like you, suffer with you, and die for you. And that's what, what the, this, this transfiguration, it's, it's, it, it's showing what's, what's going on behind the scenes. Like, this is God incarnate. This is God made man, not just a good philosopher, a nice guy, a good teacher, um, some sort of a rebel against the Romans or something. This is God incarnate, God made man. This is an absolutely astounding miracle that you'll never get your head around. And this is what's kind of revealed for, just for a moment here. Jesus' human nature is sort of bursting out from his human nature. So just like for, for a split, we don't know how long it was, but for these moments, as such, it, it's as if his human nature is no longer able to contain the divinity, the, the splendor, the glory, the beauty of who he really is. God. And so they, they see it and they say, it's, 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 it's wonderful to be here. Let's, let's stay here. Let's build three tents, says Peter. And I would hope that this is sometimes our experience as well at Mass or in adoration, where we meet the Lord in, in, a, in, a, in a much more profound way, in a much deeper, much more real way. And we begin to actually see this is, this is not just the Mass I've been to last week and the week before, or the Adoration Chapel that I'm very familiar with at this point. This is God. This is, Je this is Jesus right in front of me. This is him looking at me and loving me and, and reminding me over and over and over again that you are infinitely loved. And, and this is why he comes here in such a, such a humble state. And then he, like he doesn't stop at becoming man. He then goes on to give himself to us as Food. I, how much humbler do we want God to be for us? How much lower do we want him to step down so that he can lift us up? If you want to lift someone up, you have to get below them. So our humanity down in the mire and the dirt and the mud of our immorality and everything going on, God gets under that, into the dirt, in order to lift us up. That's what Jesus does. That's what he does from the cross. He gets down below us, takes all of our sin upon himself so he, that he, the innocent one, can expiate, offer up, redeem all of us. It's just incredible. 
And these kind of gospels remind us that this is, our faith is just so extraordinary. And every bit of it is just jam-packed, full of love. The motivation of everything is love. Um, d- during the, uh, the transfiguration, they see Elijah and Moses. Now, Elijah represents the prophets, and Moses represents the law. So you've got such all of Scripture summarized here. You've got the, the Old Testament, right? The, the, the law and the prophets. Uh, and then you've got Jesus, the New Testament. And it's all summarized there on, on Mount Tarbor. And Jesus is the, the culmination, the high point of it all. The ultimate revelation, the highest revelation, the clearest revelation of who God is. And we get to, to, jo- to join in this. We're part of this story. We get to be part of it. Every time we celebrate Mass, every time we receive Holy Communion, every time we do adoration, we get to be part of this, of this gospel. We get to witness in a veiled way, admittedly, but in a veiled way, we get to witness the transfiguration. This is our faith. It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. So we ask the Lord to open our eyes. Help us to see the treasure that surrounds us. Help us to see the glory of God hidden in the Eucharist. We ask our Blessed Lady to guide us that she might reveal to us the heart of her Son, truly God and truly man. Amen.